name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come once again to your word. Your word, which is truth and life to those who find it. We ask you to bless your word unto each heart. For we ask these things, Father, in the holy and precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And we wrote a scripture on the board. It comes from Luke 2, verses 1 through 7. As we remember the Christmas story. The Christmas story starts out with our Heavenly Father's great love for each and every one of us. And that love has not changed. So great a love did the Father have and still does that he sent the best that he had, his only begotten Son, into this world. And as we see that event unfold, which we will read in today's scripture, we read a great love being exposed as he comes in total poverty to be one like us, experiencing the same disappointments that we experience, the same downfalls that we experience as we watch him in his life as he grows and is rejected rejected by mankind, his goodness rejected in many and so many ways. So we read, and as it came to pass in those days, there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was the governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up with, up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, unto a city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his precious word. No room for them in the inn. No room. As this world and time goes on and the world is so busy, I believe half the people out there don't even know why they're buying Christmas presents. Or I'll say, it's rare that you see someone bringing Christ into this celebration that we are experiencing especially in the media. If you watch any Christmas mu movies, it's rare that you'll see anyone bring the Lord. You know, there's a saying, he's the reason for the season. So many and so much has been forgotten. Why they buy Christmas bulbs and why they have dinners and celebrations. You know, office parties crack out the liquor a lot of people are drinking away, bars get filled up. You know, everyone's celebrating. And you know, I used to think about this, that do people realize why they're celebrating? That someone died for all their sins, that they might have eternal life, that they can truly find joy in life that they can find healing, healing in relationships, healing in, in opportunities in their jobs, 
guidance in her life's wisdom to have a personal relationship with her creator. Oh, there's a lot of happy campers out there and you'll see them staggering on the streets with a lot of Christmas joy. It's not the same joy because the next morning when they wake up with a splitting headache, it's not so joyful anymore. But yet they love to celebrate. And there the king of king lies in a manger. When God does something, he just doesn't do it. He does it for a specific reason. It was no accident that there was no room for them in the end. When God moves and we read the scriptures, there is always a reason and a purpose as to what he is doing and why he is doing. And it always fits in the whole Bible into the New Testament and Old. For truly the manger is a feeding trough where animals feed. And was he not and is he not the bread from heaven come down from heaven to feed us? Was he not prophesied all the way back when God shows us in the natural what will happen in the spiritual, when the manna fell from heaven to feed the Israelites for 40 years, that's all they needed. Yes, it was a natural feeding, but again, God shows us in the natural what he has for us in the spiritual. It was a fulfilling experience. They didn't need steak and eggs. It was, it fed and supplied their total sustenance of everything that they needed. So it's no accident that he was laid in a feeding trough. And it was no accident that he was rejected. The word of God says that he has nowhere to lay his head. Accept into your hearts where he said he's prepared a place that we're the temple of his Holy Spirit where he resides. And today the question is raised is, is there any room in our manger, in our inn? Is there a place for Jesus Christ to reside? Because that's what we were created for, was to have fellowship with him. I believe that's why in the scripture he said, foxes have their holes and birds of the air have their nests, but the son of man hath nowhere to lay his head until he went to the cross and opened the door spiritually for mankind. You see, it was all about eternity. We know and we understand that our flesh will die because of sin, but we will get a new resurrected body. But our spirit, when we die, lives forever. It either goes with the Lord or someplace else, maybe even hell, forever. Your spirit is eternal. And when he came as the bread of life and as he spoke to his disciples and said, eat my body and drink my blood, and they... They were totally confused and misunderstood the statement. Because when you read the excerpt, the excerpt in John, Jesus says, when he talked to, when a half of his disciples left, and he said to his disciples, will you leave me too? He said, it, was, it is spirit that I'm speaking. When we talk about the body and blood of Jesus, it's spirit. It's a spiritual feeding for your eternal soul, your eternal spirit. And there is a grace there for each and every one of us. Now, I imagine going to a party 
which in this world, many of us will be going to a party to celebrate. And can you imagine yourself going to a party and not know why you're there? You know, we drink the food, or drink the, we eat the food, we drink the drink. We even buy gifts for each other, but is the very person that we're celebrating even brought into the celebration? And that's part of our responsibility as his people, and not just as his people, but in the reality of having a relationship with him. To be that light, to bring him into the celebrations of this world. You know, I compare it to going to a regular party and not even acknowledging who the party's for. Eat all the food, drink all the drink, and not even acknowledge him. Which we said earlier, half the people today don't even know why they're celebrating. They're like party crashers, okay? Hey, there's a party down the street, let's go party. Why are we partying? It's Christmas, what does that mean? can be kind of insulting, I think, to the Lord. <clears throat> How would we feel? And see the opportunity we have with today is to prepare the manger within our hearts. What is in our manger? What is in our the temple that we live? Is there room for him in our daily lives? Or is it filled with so many other things of this world? It's filled with worry about money or having a lot of money. It's filled with, gee, I got this gift list and I have to go out and get all these gifts for all these other people. I got dinners to prepare. I got to decorate the tree. I got to put lights up. You know, there's a thousand things that fill up the inn. And no wonder there's no room for him. We're so busy celebrating. While he's somewhere else. How much more will the dinners be? And how much more will the presents be? And how much more will the lights be? And how much more will all of it be if we make room for him to come in and fill that spot that was made for him. To give him some kind of gift. We'll make giving others gifts in memory of that. Yeah, we have to remember that's why we give gifts because the wise men, see there are wise men and women out there that don't forget. And I pray that you and I today and many others, I pray will come to that, re that realization of truly not to forget why we're doing what we're doing. What a great celebration it is whenever we make that choice, whenever we recognize who he is 
and that he's alive and we invite him into our heart because now comes that explosion of celebration within you. Many go to celebrations and they're still down. And they don't know why. But when we invite him into our hearts and love over explodes in your heart where the love of God just fills you. And his joy fills you, regardless of your circumstances. Sheds a whole new different light on everything in our lives. Where we can truly enjoy all the festivities. It's great to have a dinner. And it's great to have a party to celebrate. It's great to decorate the house. But we don't want to do it without the guest of honor. The guest of honor. The Christ. Who loves us. So today we pray. In our own lives as we make that journey to the manger where it's just you and him in that presence. I pray today that his presence fills you with that joy. And maybe today you've never invited him and maybe you were one that's been caught up with everything but the guest of honor the reason for the season, the birthday boy. This is your opportunity to clear the house. Hey, Jesus wants to come in. We gotta clear some rooms. We gotta rearrange the inn. We gotta start making some places, a place for him to reside to place his head, his presence within our end because he's real. And there's only one way that can happen. No one can do it for you. It's you and him. It's you making a personal relationship with him. He's alive and he's in this room. He can live in your hearts, his presence. Yes, it involves repentance. Because our hearts can be full of booze and liquor and drugs and sex and money and decorations and shopping and, oh my God, I'm so exhausted and tired from getting ready for Christmas. Don't miss them. That, all that stuff is great. And I praise God, the people that we can celebrate. And we should. But the guest of honor should be at the top of the list. Let us make room within our own ends and our hearts. Let that be a part of the gift that we give him during Advent is the perfect time to make room to celebrate his coming. And if you've never invited him in, today's a good day to do it. He's no respecter of persons. I don't care if you're, if you're Jewish, if you're Greek, if you're a Muslim. I don't care who you are, what race you are, or how old you are. Invite the guest of honor. God himself into your inn, into your manger and worship him, God alone. Let him wash away your sins, your doubts, your fears. Let him fill you with the true gift from heaven, eternal life. Isn't that what we celebrate? Is that sin 
has been paid for. That breach between God and man has been mended. That's what we're celebrating. We're celebrating this reuniting with God, our creator who wants to fellowship with us, who wants to live within us. And he comes with great things like joy, which this world is being sucked out of the world with discouragement and uncertainty and insecurity. To fill your hearts with love, which many love is waxing cold because of offenses. And most, and peace, which is also being sucked out of this world. Peace in our homes, peace in our souls. End the war. Settle it by asking Christ into your heart, into your manger. Do it this Christmas. Ask him to forgive you your sins because all have fallen short. And he's the only one that can do it. And with that comes the gift of eternal life forever with him in heaven. Don't miss the greatest gift that has been given. And don't miss the person of honor Jesus Christ, as to why and how we celebrate it. Because it was his life given at the cross for you and me that opened the doors for abundant life and eternal life in heaven. That's why we celebrate it. So Lord, we pray, and as we end, we lift each before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs>